Um, let's move on to the sections, and this basically is kind of extended um, applications uh, from eccentric loading, and this is the another application applications about what we learned of the pure bending. <coughs> this basically we call the unsymmetric bending. Uh, unsymmetric bending uh, basically is like this. Here we're going to use um, just showing here. Okay, the unsymmetric bending is the way the bending, uh, the moment of the bending applied to a plane. That plane is not symmetric respect to the cross section of the beam. Okay, from here in this demonstration, you can see this plane uh, about which the moment applied is kind of inclined by theta from the y. <coughs> the the y-axis basically constitute the symmetric plane here. So basically here the bending moment is uh, tilted a little bit from the symmetric and the orientations. So in this section is we're going to, uh, will be more convenient for us and actually I'm going to adopt this one. We're going to use the double arrow. We're going to use double arrow sign to indicate the, the orientation of the moment. And again, the way to obtain the double arrow sign is to uh, handle the align your four uh, fingers in the directions of the moment applied and then your thumb uh, pointing to where the um, the double arrow indicates okay so basically that's the way we apply here and <coughs> schematically the double arrow for this this particular case will be like this. Okay, so again, we're going to use the double arrow to describe the direction of the bending. So we'll look at this problem in details. Basically, again, uh, in our concerns, we're going to look for two, um, uh, the answers of two questions. One is how to obtain the stress at any point um, over the cross section and of the beam on this unsymmetric bending, okay? <coughs> and then the second one, we want to determine the orientations of the neutral axis. And again, the neutral axis uh, in our pure bending, that is passing through the centroid, and then usually align in Z direction or Y direction perfectly. But due to unsymmetric bending, the, the orientation of the neutral axis will be oriented, okay? So we're going to answer the two questions and let's take a look at this particular example first, okay? So for example, here the bending applied is in an inclined plane and that is tilted from the symmetric plane. So in double arrow is something like this one. So we start from here, we look at on the cross section, we start from here to decompose this bending into two components. So basically this one is the uh, decompositions of the M in Y direction, so let me designate as the MY. So this one projecting to here, that is called the MZ. And again, using double arrow, okay, and double arrow. So from this case, you can see the MY, for example here, let me say this is the theta here. Okay, so MY will be equal to M times cosine theta and mz will be equal to m times psi theta here, okay. So the originally, that is on the unsymmetric bending, then we decompose into two uh, subsystems. One subsystem is only on my, and this one is under mz only, okay. mz and my. <coughs> So now for this case, and and then the second step is to identify, I would like to say, uh, identify the attribute of tension compression. So let me kind of begin to mess up the drawing again. So why, uh, how to, to help us uh, one more time. So again, if this is a beam, okay, and now I try to draw this section here, okay? So this is a beam. <coughs> And right now, this beam is under the um, the MY, the application of the MY like this one. And again, apply your right hand rule. The MY basically is to bend about this, okay? So basically the MY is in this portion. So on the other side, the MY will be like this. 
So under this case, and the bin will be curved toward this way. So let me try to draw this one carefully. So say this is the one direction, one direction, and one direction here. Okay. And then this bin, let me emphasize this side, <coughs> the bin will be curved in this way, uh, in this plane, okay, in this horizontal plane, and this curve, oops, <coughs> this curve will be curved like this, okay. So all the fibers will be in the similar fashion. So from this case, you should be able to easily identify this portion will be in tension. Okay, that means the left part uh, of the beam will be in tension. This will be in compression. And in a similar way, let me try to draw this case, the beam, and this a cross section and under the MZ, okay? And again, uh, this is the three dimensions. Let me draw the three dimension beam here. And again, the MZ, again, apply your right hand rule, the MZ would be something like this one right here, okay? And let me draw it in different orientation, it'll be easier to see. <coughs> so again, apply your right hand rule, the MZ will be bent like this, about the Z axis. So on the other side, the MZ will be like this one right here. So for this case, you can see basically this beam will be curved up. Okay, so the beam will be curved up. Let me try to draw the curve up. <sighs> okay, so in this case, can you see, we should be able to easily see the under the lower portions of the beam, the lower portion will be in tension and upper portion will be in compression here. <coughs> So then, in this case, we proceed the stress, and for this case, for this case, the stress will be equal to, again, the magnitude, remember our template, the our magnitude is my over i, okay? So that is our template. So from here, we simply plug in our template here, uh, one by one. So what is M? M is a bending, and for this case, it's MY here. So let me use MY. And Y here in our, um, in our the previous pure bending application, the Y is, remind you, so if this is a beam, and for under pure bending, okay? And so this is our neutral surface here, and the distributions of the bending uh, the stress will be something like this one right here, okay? So what is Y? For example, if you're interested in the stress here, then Y representing is a distance between the point where you're interested to where the neutral uh, surface is. So over the cross section for this case, if, for example, if you're interested at this point here, so that Y, this representing is a distance from the point to where the neutral surface here, so that is from the neutral surface, and this is the neutral surface. Okay, this case is uh, is this case here. Okay, this is the neutral surface. If you curve toward that way, so let me identify. This is the neutral axis here. Okay, <coughs> so in this way, this representing the distance. So that is go to the distance in terms of the template y here that represent. So in this case, you can see this distance actually measure in terms of our coordinate that is z. Again, here in our template, that this term representing is the distance between the point to the neutral the axis, and in terms of the coordinate we apply here, that is y here. That's a z here. Okay. And what is I? I is a moment of energy respect to the neutral axis, and here this axis is our, our y axis, okay? So let's practice one more time. <coughs> so for this subsystem, again, the sigma equal to have a magnitude, 
Again, using our template, M is a bending. The bending applied for this case is MZ, so using MZ here. So say, let me pick up the same point, okay, the same point here. So now this is a point, and again, the template Y here representing a physical meaning is a distance between the point to the neutral, the, the neutral axis. <coughs> here, this is our neutral axis here. Again, this one, you look at this diagram here, this is our neutral axis, okay, neutral axis here. So neutral axis is Z. So from here, the distance between the point to the neutral axis, actually that measures in terms of our coordinate, coordinate that is Y here, okay. And I is a moment of initial respect to the neutral axis, which is Z axis. So we put a Z here. Good, okay. So with everything, then we can proceed to do the calculations and let me erase the um, necessary information. So here I'm going to erase those, um, <coughs> erase those and we see, okay. So, um, so for this case, this is the our MY. Okay, and this is our neutral axis. And for this case, this is our neutral axis. Okay, and then MZ applied to here. So now we have the everything here, then we can uh, answer the questions. So again, I need uh, more space. So how about this, I erase this one. I even erase this one. Okay. So now, for example, if say we want to determine the point here, so let me call the point A. Okay, and this corner is point B. This corner is point C. This corner is point D. So here we simply want to determine the stress at the A, B, C, D. So at point A, the stress at point A is equal to the superposition of the stress here and plus the stress here, okay? So we superpose two values. The stress here, the magnitude is equal to, again, as MY, okay? and then plug in the z for example say let me say the distance from here to here is uh, a okay so that is a and this is i picking up this one i y okay um, <coughs> and then for this term uh, plus this one here so this and okay, and this one again back to here, this is in tension. So that's using positive integrate, this is tensile stress. And now we come to this portion here, that is A point is here, the magnitude equal to N and Z and Y. So let me say this one is a B, okay? So B here and IZ, okay? And then this point is in compressive region, so we added a minus sign indicating this is a compressive. And this one is the tensile. Okay, so and this addition is this kind of superposition here, so that determines A. So in the similar way, at point B, the stress B equal to, again, this is point B here. So for this subsystem, the stress is N, and again, taking the template, and distance from here to here is the same A, okay? And IY, okay, and then at B, in this point, in this cross section, that's compressive. So here I put a minus sign, indicating this is compressive. <coughs> and superpose, with the system, the stress at point B on this subsystem here. So here, let me write up the magnitude first. And MZ, and the distance here is B, okay? And the respect to IZ here, okay? And again, uh, B at this subsystem is compressive. So I added this one, compressive, okay? 
So you can proceed the similar. Let me do one more. So say uh, D C here. Okay. S C the sigma stress S C here and do and we can exercise one more time. C is here. So that is magnitude again picking this template N Y and the distance is Z coordinate. So Z coordinate from the from here to here that is A here. Okay. And I Y and this one again this is in compressive region so that is compressive remind yourself remind ourselves okay now we come to here this is C here in this system and the magnitude first and MZ times the distance from here to here is B okay and IZ okay and then C is in tensile region so here I put the positive remind ourselves that is the tensile okay so that is the way we add it up together and <coughs> so that is the way we come up with these things okay so that you should be able to repeat the value the stress at d here okay that simply superposes the value here so here we basically we answer the first questions and propose to obtain the stress at any point at any point here i simply pick up at the corner there uh, the second one determine the location of the neutral axis the again the neutral axis uh, is by definition is where the stress equal to zero and by looking at this kind of superposition uh, of the two subsystems here and let me put into four quadrant here let me erase a little bit more space for demonstrations okay I want to keep this one and then okay so we can look at these original uh, cross sections and the cross section with the y axis and with the z axis divided into four quadrants and this is a quadrant one, quadrant two, and quadrant three, and quadrant four. Okay. And when we proceed the stress at A, B, C, D, etc., that basically we exercise the stress being calculated in quadrant two, one, three, and four. Okay, individually. In quadrant two, we we'll look at this the superposition. Quadrant two is the sign. Uh, summation of a positive number plus negative number okay so that is the positive and superposed to a negative uh, number here and in the similar way quadrant 3 is the superposition of a negative number which is compressive superposed to a positive and quadrant 1 that is the superpose of 2 negative number here okay that is a negative here negative here and it's a similar way quadrant three is a superpose of two uh, positive numbers so from here is a positive from here is positive okay so we can double check you can see here is a point a the point a is a superposition of positive and negative number positive tension negative compression and B here is a superposition of the two negative numbers so there's a negative negative okay and we proceed C here is a superposition of the negative positive negative positive etc okay so once you know this one then we asking where likely the combination which means the superposition of the two stresses two numbers will likely become zero that would likely happen to either this case a positive plus a negative number will be a ch they will have a chance to get them zero so that will happen here happen here but not here not here okay not here so here i can say and anywhere we're looking for the zero stress the zero stress will happen in quadrant two and in quadrant four in this example because that will be a likely we will be likely to find a location where the combination of positive negative or negative positive that will become a zero so that gives us a starting point here okay <coughs> 
So in this way, let me see uh, how can we proceed. So say um, at the origin, for this case, uh, the coordinate will be zero, zero. So the, the sigma, so say, uh, let me formulate, for example, here. OK, so let me formulate, say, the neutral axis will pass through, say, this point here, OK? So let me pick this point, and let me that give the the measure the distance. So this distance, and this is our y coordinate. So which means this has a distance, say y, okay. And this is our z coordinate. So this distance is uh, labeled as z here, okay. So at this point, so let me call this point is uh, give a number. So for example, this point is e. At e. The sigma at E will be equal to zero, and zero that means because here we're assuming the neutral axis uh, pass passes uh, point E. So neutral axis by definition is the zero stress, so that is zero stress here. And on the other side, zero stress and E is here, okay? And E is here, so that is a superposition of from the two stresses. So again, we look for the the number here. So for this subsystem, the magnitude is again m y, and from here to here, that is a distance z, and moment of inertia with respect to i y. Okay, and in this region, that is tension. Okay, and now superpose to the stress at this point here in this subsystem. So the magnitude from this template, mz, and the distance from here to the neutral axis is, M, is y, and the moment of inertia is iz here, okay? And the point in this subsystem is uh, compressive, so that's compressive. So you make this one equal to zero. <coughs> okay, this one equal to zero. And then given m y i y m z i z given, though, then you should be able to find the uh, the relation. For example, y equal to say alpha times z, and alpha basically is in the relations of these things.